What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel or if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to do this behind the back logo spawn effect where you can see it animates in. I'm also going to be showing you some interactive stuff using this like dialing specific numbers. Consider subscribing, liking the video if you do enjoy the content. Comment below what you'd like to see next. In the last video I mentioned we're back to our one video every three day schedule. I want to keep all these under 10 minutes. In my next tutorial I'm going to be breaking down some of my work for famous artists such as Wiz Khalifa, Gunna, Future. That video is going to be a mix of some lessons I learned along the way, as well as tutorials on some things that I've done in those. I'm also going to have an ultimate guide to creating 3D characters uploading after that. So again, stay tuned. So let's go ahead and start from scratch. If you guys want to use that dynamic link in Premiere, click the new item button, create a transparent video, and we're going to right click and bring that into After Effects. Or if you guys only have After Effects, just start with an After Effects. So I'll delete that transparent video here and let's go ahead and bring in some footage. So the first thing that you want to do if you want to place anything behind the back, we want to rotoscope our footage so that we can isolate this front layer. So I'm going to double click on this layer so that we are not in a composition, we're in the layer. And then I'm going to grab my roto brush tool up here in the top left. And on the first frame of my timeline here, I'm going to go ahead and just start drawing in the general area of my comp. So if you hold down alt on your keyboard, you guys can delete parts of this mask, try and get this purple line around the edge of your subject. So we're gonna draw in green here for the logo. All right, so this does not have to be perfect because we're just placing things behind his shoulder. So once you've done that, you click page up and page down on your keyboard and you can move frame by frame here. So we'll move to the next frame. If you see any parts of this purple mask messing up, you make the adjustment. All right, and we went through every frame. That looks good. I only had to make one or two adjustments. So once you've done that, all you need to do is click this freeze button and we're gonna have our subject here isolated. Once we've frozen our footage, we can click back into the composition to see the changes that we made. And if you guys need to, you can go to your effect controls on the left, add a little bit of feather, change around some shift edge. So once you have that all ready to go, we're going to select our footage and we're going to click control D to duplicate it. So on the bottom layer here, we're going to rename this to background. I'm going to go into the effect controls of my background layer and we're going to delete the roto brush off of there. So now we can put anything between these two layers and have it behind him. So let's set up our logo. We're going to have the glow set up all the animation and then we'll talk about some of the other effects going forward. All right, guys, so you can search for any logo you want. I went for the Pittsburgh Pirates logo here, obviously for that Pittsburgh influence in the whiz vid. You want to make sure in Google images, you click tools and under color, you're searching for transparent so you can find a PNG image. Or of course, if you guys have Photoshop, bring whatever custom logo you have into there and remove the background and save that as a PNG. So we'll go ahead and save that. We'll click show in folder and I'm going to drag this directly into After Effects. So let's select that layer. I'll click S to scale it down a bit. Now we can grab this and put it between our isolated subject and our background. And you're going to see how that now goes behind our subject. So that's why we do the rotoscoping at the beginning. Now let's turn this into an animated glowing logo that we can manipulate, add different effects to. Let's just hide everything else. We're going to select the logo layer and I'm going to go up to the layer tab and we're gonna click auto trace. So here's my settings that I've been using for this. If you guys want to, you can mess around if you're not getting such a clean look. You can also see this little purple line for the preview. That's looking great. So I'll click okay. And it's gonna create some masks for me. So if I open up mask here, you guys can see, let's show them. So now we can go to our effects and presets and we can search for a stroke effect. So under generate here, place stroke on our logo layer. So in our effect controls for our stroke, let's just check on all masks. And then you guys can select the brush size here. I'm going to hide the mask for now just so it's easier. You'll see this little white line that we got. So I'm going to grab the brush size, pump that up a bit. And now if you don't want the original logo showing, well, you just want the animated glowing lines, you want to change your paint style from on original image to on transparent. So let's set up a little animation. Make sure you're at the beginning of our timeline here. We're going to go over to where it says start. If you just start cranking that value to the left or right, you can see how it creates this little generate stroke effect. Same with end. So if you want to start from the end and then create it like that, you can. So we'll grab that end value and we'll just set it so it's invisible. So we'll make it 0%. And again, at the beginning, we're gonna create a keyframe. So click toggle animation for end. We're gonna drag a few frames for when we want it to be fully showing. We're gonna drag this to 100%. So now you'll see I created my keyframes here. And if I press play, you're going to see how we have that logo coming in quickly. Now, if that's a little bit too fast for you, just grab this keyframe and drag it out and it'll make that a lot more slowed down. So now let's go ahead and show our background and our isolated subject. We'll just click to show the visibility. Let's go ahead and drag a few frames so we can start seeing this coming in. And we're going to move our Pittsburgh P logo. We'll click R to rotate it and we'll give it a little bit of rotation here. Now let's go ahead and add our glow to it. If you guys want to change the color at this point in your effect controls for your stroke, just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make that yellow and I'm going to go to my effects and presets 
and search for an After Effects Glow. So we'll use the stylized basic AE Glow and drag that here. Take the glow radius and just start bumping that up. And you'll see here, if I mess around with my radius, how we can change the look of that glow. If we press play, here's what that looks like. So pretty cool. Since we rotoscoped our subject at the beginning, you can add in any other effects using freeze frames, using assets. I made a video called 10 different behind the back effect looks. If you wanna reference that. Personally, what I did was I added in these 3D chains. So if I right click import and multiple files here, the good news about these chains is that I'm actually going to be releasing some of them in a free video editor asset pack that I'm gonna be putting out soon. So a bunch of different music video-esque effects will be available, so I'll import this in. If you guys wanna just find any other overlays, check out my website link below or just search for green screen chain skull, blah, blah, blah on the internet. So I'll take that chain render that we've been working on, I'll paste that into the comp and I'll drag that underneath that isolated subject layer so that it's now behind. I'll also click R to rotate it and then I'll duplicate it a couple of times and then I'll change the rotation on those duplications. You can go ahead and look up a little fill effect so that our background assets aren't taking up so much of the screen. And we'll go ahead and just make that black. So easy as that, that's how we can create our glowing logo. So I'm gonna show you a couple more things, such as creating this phone dial animation. Before I do that, if you wanna add a little bit of depth to your logo, what you can do is click toggle switches and modes and just enable it as a 3D layer. So you see this little 3D cube switch here? We're gonna go ahead and click that on. Control D to duplicate it. If you want, I kinda like how that looks all glowed. So I'll duplicate it again. And since we've made this a 3D layer, you can now grab this Z axis, this blue one right here, and you can drag that up or out. And that way it's gonna sort of project a little bit closer to the camera. You can also take this layer and just drag it to the right a little bit so that it starts a little bit late. Now you're gonna have this sort of offsetted animation. And if you keep duplicating the bottom layer here and dragging back the Z position, always make sure that that layer is at the very bottom. You can kind of create this depth illusion. This is just an example. Create a little camera here. Here's what I mean by that with that depth illusion. Pretty much a tunnel going backwards in Z space. So that's also a pretty cool look if you guys if you guys want to just add in a little camera here. Click C to change your camera controls and mess around with that. You could also animate the camera. Click transform. Click and drag down for our keyframes. Drag to the end and we'll just zoom through. And there you go, we've created our little tunnel animation going through and you could keep adding to that, blah, blah, blah. Now for our video here where we have our phone dial animation spawn in, and if you didn't catch it, I made it sort of dial out 412, which is the area code for Pittsburgh. And I think adding little things like that in your editing is just a cool way to add some spice into the video. So let's start from scratch and set up our little phone animation. I'm gonna go ahead and click to create a new composition. I'll name that phone. Again, you wanna grab your footage. I'm just gonna grab that footage that we used previously. And we don't need to do any rotoscoping on this one, which is nice. To create the actual phone layout itself, I created a new composition and named that phone. So what I did was I went to Google Images and I searched for an iPhone call screen. So something like this would work fine and drag that into After Effects. Here's what mine ended up looking like. To get this so that it's only the numbers, what I did was I used a mask. So I just clicked on this little masking tool and dragged it over the area that I really needed. So we have a white background with the rings of these being black. We need to invert this so that we can have these white and no background. So I went to my effects and presets and searched for an invert, drag that onto there. So let's drag in that phone composition here. Here's what it looks like. So what we need to do to get rid of this black background is just change the blending mode. So if you're not seeing this drop down, click toggle switches and modes to show it. And we're gonna put this on add so that we're only showing the white parts of this phone. We need to go ahead and track the footage so that it's not just sitting here in 2D space. So right click on your footage, we're gonna go up to track and stabilize and we're going to track the camera. So once that goes through here, if you click on this in your effect controls, you can see all the tracking data that we've collected. So I'm gonna go ahead and just place this bullseye around his face and I'm gonna right click and click create solid and camera. So now let's grab that solid that we made and we'll open up the transform. I'm gonna change the orientation a little bit so that this is facing forward. I'll also scale that down so it's not taking up the full screen. If we play that, that should be tracked on his face. So we can actually hide the visibility of this track solid and I'll rename that to tracking info. And for our phone comp here, I'm gonna make sure that that is a 3D layer. So again, enable that for the phone. Once you've set up your tracking info for our phone here, we can go to this parent and link, and we're gonna go ahead and parent that to our tracking info. Transform here and just click reset so that it's exactly where our uh, track solid was. So I'll scale that up a little bit. So to actually dial a specific number, what I'm gonna do is create some shape layers. So up here in the top left on your toolbar, you're gonna see this little rectangle. 
If you hold down Alt and you click that, you can select your ellipse tool and also click Q just to bring that up quickly. So make sure you're not selecting any layers because if you do, you'll just be making a mask. And we're going to draw a circle around the first number that we'd like to dial. And then I'll hold down control and sort of position that around the number itself. Choose the color that you'd like for your dial. I used yellow. So in the top left here where it says fill, go ahead and select whatever you want that to be. Now you don't want this to be a solid color. You want to see the number underneath it. We're going to change our blending mode. So click toggle switches and modes to show this drop down. If you want, you can even mess around, maybe soft light, hard light. Soft light looks perfect. Now, if we press play here, you're going to see how this isn't following with the rest of our phone. It's just floating there. So what we're going to do is click toggle switches and modes. We're going to enable this as a 3D layer like we did before. So just enable that there. And then for parent and link, we're going to link it to our phone layer. If it changes the positioning, all you need to do, just change your anchor points. It's annoying, but now everything is linked up properly. So when we press play, it's going to be sticking in that area in the correct 3D space. And then all you need to do for dialing more numbers, just control D to duplicate that layer and then just change the anchor point. So we'll take the anchor point and just drag it up. Control D, we'll rename that to two. And then again, we'll take the anchor point, move that to the right. If you want them to come in one after the other, just take the layer and drag it a little bit to the right. Same with this top one. So now the four will come in, the one will come in, and then the two will come in. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.